the young sheep, young lambs of the fold. And the worst thing about it is that the pulpits are not warning. Not warning people. Their people. And the young lambs about the enemy that is in the midst. When young believers hear of the Keswick Holies movement, there's no preaching against it from the pulpits. There's no preaching against it from anywhere. They begin to think, well, there must be something in this. And there must be something in Arminianism. And there must be something in receiving power from on high. Hmm? Oh, there must be. And they come to their fancy books, you see. Written up, George Moore, how he prayed, and he was a prayer warrior. All, right, all the fancy words, you see. Woo, yeah, yeah. Promote, promote, promote. And naturally, they are attracted by these things. And, and people put on, the enemy puts on a smiling face. But as soon as you ask the truth of things, oh, baby, yuck. You know? And then, of course, they say, you're negative. You're not working for God. Hmm? You're one of those people that we need to avoid because you're causing contention. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, carry on. Do you really think that gets to me? Eh? No. You can carry on and, and say that we that see what is going on and see clearly what's going on, the accusers have been contentious, you know, and we, that you should avoid us. And we say to you, thank you very much. Yeah. It doesn't really bother us. <clears throat> Do you know something? Hmm? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Do you follow Jesus Christ? Oh yeah, I follow Jesus. Right. Now Christ followed the truth. The way, the truth and the life. And he was the way, the truth and the life. Okay. Now then. What did he have to say to the Pharisees? What was his position before the Pharisees and the money changers? <laughs> hmm? uh, I'll tell you something now. If Jesus Christ was to walk this earth to this moment in time, you'd have him imprisoned. You'd be phoning for the police. It's causing a public disturbance. It's causing, hey, look at him. He's turning over the tables. And he's calling the bishop here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He's, he's calling him down. Why did he look at And the clergy. A den of vipers. And the call, it's, it's calling everybody thieves and robbers and oh, adulterers. Have him arrested. Eh? Hey? Wouldn't you? The most contentious person ever walked this earth, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey? Oh, it's gone into that church. Oh no 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 the tables are going. Oh the money's flying everywhere. The thieves are being cast out. Hey? Eh? The money changes, short changing people. They've been cast out. Oh, he's called in pandemonium. Come here, sir. Eh? The Armenians would like you to be arrested and we're going to arrest you, eh? After we've truncheoned you. That's the reality of it. There is no comeliness that we should. What? Well, adore him. 
follow him. He was just an ordinary man from the outward appearance. An ordinary man. But the son of man. The man. The perfect man. The Adam that should have been in the first place. And as the perfect man, he laid down the perfect sacrifice. Hmm? Arminianism stands in the synagogue of Satan, attacking, attacking, attacking. The doctrine of Christ, having attacked God and continues to attack God, Christ and the Holy Spirit. Arminianism cannot stop doing this because it is Arminianism. It stands in the temple, sorry, the synagogue of Satan against the temple of God. And it comes up with these doctrines like false sanctification, hmm? baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've got to be on fire for God. You've got to be a prayer warrior. <laughs> you know, look this way in other words, look that way. And whilst you're looking that way, look this way. Because we've got sanct full sanctification for you here. Come on now, ladies and gentlemen, have full sanctification for you. All you've got to do is surrender your life. Excuse me a moment, how do I surrender my life? Because I don't know the wholeness of my life. Are you saying I am God? Hmm? Oh, hello there, yes. Ah, uh, right, I see, I see. So salvation is without law, is it? It's just commitment. And this goes on forever. We're distracted this way, we're distracted that way, we're distracted the other way, and the pulpits are as dead as the sand of the sea. Totally dead. Not giving us instruction. That's a fact of life, and we're hated for it. You speak the truth in this world, and you're hated for it. The point of being is this, again, distraction. This is the warfare, okay? Because we come to another aspect of many aspects. And this other aspect is war. The Armenians are at war with us Christians. Diversionary tactics are employed in the war. So that we look over here. And then we look over here. We're looking in every direction other than the direction that the enemy is coming. And what the beggars are doing is taking the foundations of the fundamentals of the doctrine of Christ and undermining them with us. They can't intrinsically be undermined because they are established in Christ, in God, in the Holy Spirit. They can't be touched. What they can be done is taken away from our understanding. And that is the whole purpose of Arminianism. And on what does Arminianism do? Promotes itself in a way that, look at us, God is with us. We've got soul winning. <laughs> Come on now, get some soul winning done. You, how many souls have you won? God is with us. Hey, oh, he was with us, you know, in that meeting last week. Oh, he was with us. We, we felt his presence. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, just hang on. Just oh, he, hang on a minute. You're, you're so excited about this. Just a moment. I'll just go and get a cup of tea. All right? Is that all right with you? Mm, just hang on there. I'll go get a cup of tea. You know? I'll just put me feet on. All right. Oh, I think I'll have a sandwich. Carry on. Carry on, God. What was that one you said? God was with you in a special manner last. What was that last service? Was it, or was it? Couple, oh, oh, yeah. I forgot. You see, it was a last last service. He was in the presence, and oh, we had a very blessing, and, and people. And this goes on. And you just take your nice cup of tea, you know, and a sandwich. You know, 
Because it's not irreverent what you're doing. You're just mocking them. <laughs> yeah, you know, carry on. Carry on. See if I care. Hey? Do I care? No. You spin your doctrine, your fanciful doctrines and your fanciful revival meetings and all this lot. I'll tell you something now at the end of the day. You know what I am? I am nobody. I am an unprofitable servant. I've never saved a soul in my life. <laughs> and never will. Alright? But I'm a child of God. Chosen of God. To live for God. Personally, in my life, to live for God. And to be a pillar in society. And the salt in society. Hmm? One of the lively stones. Now God has chosen me to be that. Therefore I am more highly blessed than any other person in this world. Aside from my brethren. Who are equally blessed. So all this fanciness. All this fancy words, fancy show and all the rest of it. It doesn't bother me because God is with me. He has chosen to be with me. Yes, he chose me and others to be with him. And we are with him. So who has the highest blessing? Intrinsically, I have the highest blessing. And everybody that is born of God has the highest blessing. All this outward that you're putting forward will go because it's time and it's created in time and therefore it will vanish with time. But you can't vanish my position before God. I'm sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How high can you get than that? Huh? And at the end of the day my duty is as a Christian fundamental duty is to be grounded in the doctrines of Christianity so that I may know where I stand before whom I stand how I stand and to go from there to live by telling the truth or Christian life is one of telling the truth. It's obtaining the truth from amidst of lies of this world and going forward. It's integrity. It's good manners. It's good behaviour. It's uprightness of life. And we do this with our own personal life by training ourselves to be better than we normally are. We seek to embrace the truth of matters when the world is corrupted the world will say this, this and this, and the world itself knee-jerks to itself in believing this, this and this. We, on the other hand, being of a different world, seated in heavenly places above the world, should be rightly discerning what's going on, and that, therefore, is eventually to embrace the truth of a matter. It's always down to truth. Truth that is evidenced. Evidenced truth. Right? And we should be the best all-round educated people on this planet. We should virtually know a bit about everything.
We shouldn't be like the world, ignorant. We should always be inquiring, always looking, always searching for more knowledge, more understanding, more wisdom, so that we can pass it on, having embraced it. Our life should be one, ultimately, of honesty. Honesty. When people ask us various things, we should be able to answer them. And if we don't, we should be able to say to them, right, you've, you've asked me the question, I'll tell you what, you look it up and I'll look it up and see what we come up with. See what we come up with. This is the normal, practical, down-to-earth way that we Christians should live. And when the full sanctification movements come along, the millennials movements come along, the rapture movements come along, hmm? and the gospel campaign movements come along, they're all the enemies. All the enemies. Oh, you must have full assurance. Campaign comes along. That's the enemy. You must have commitments instead of conversion. That's the enemy. You must speak in tongues. That's the enemy. If we can't sit here, huh? And swing round and say, oh, here comes the tongues movement. Oh, <laughs> line up the cannon. Let's blast away. Blast them back into the eternity of hell that they came from. Oh, here comes the Armenians. Fire! Hey? Oh, in this movement. Fire! Hmm? The Pelagians. Fire! Hey? Oh, here comes the idols. Oh, oh, oh. hello, Dad JC. Well, <laughs> right, fire! Oh, yes. Tosa! Oh, the people warming down to them. Fire! Huh? Christmas heavens. Bang! Oh, fire! Hey? Dear old Moody, oh, here comes Spurgeon, oh, Lloyd Jones, oh, my goodness. Anti Sandemanianism. Fire! Poof! Hey? Finney. Irving. John Nelson Darby, wow, they're lining up, you know, eh? Hmm? Boy, look at them, eh? I'll tell you what, safe shells, nuke them, huh? Look at them. Boy, when we look out into this world, we see all these aeromongers, and they come in sheep's clothing. Ah, but they can't bleat like sheep. They're like, they're goats. That's all they are, goats. And they seek to copy us. But you know something at the end of the day, and we'll close with this, Jesus Christ said to those goats, did he not? Basically, you've copied my people. But you did not do it to the least of my people. Matthew 25 are we not? The goats and the sheep. The sheep came first and were put onto the right side. And that is righteousness and holiness. Then shall they also, this is the goats, answer him, verse 44 of Matthew 25, okay? Verse 44 of Matthew 25. Then shall they also Answer him, saying, Lord, so the own Christ is Lord, this is the goats. When saw we thee and hungered, or a first, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Now verse 30, 45. They copied the sheep. They done it in the name of the Lord. They preached and they served people. In the name of the Lord. These were nominal Christians. They were goats. Verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it 
not unto one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. The least of the one of these, you didn't do it. You didn't do it to Christians. You had nothing but contempt for Christians. You showed your works. I do this charity, I do that charity, and I do charity. Charitable things are, are fine. Absolutely the Christian way. And the goats knew it. And they wanted moral justification before God. They wanted to appease the wrath of God that they felt in their consciences. And so they did their works. And the problem being with their works, they boasted of their works. Over the Christians and they condemned the Christians. And because they condemned the Christians and had mouths towards the Christians, they offended Jesus Christ. They offended Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is with them. With us. He did not the least to one of these. Hmm? In other words, you didn't show charity to my people. Okay, let's get this straight. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, the sheep. You didn't do it to the least of the sheep. In other words, none of the sheep. You didn't show charity. Hmm? You did it not unto me. They were not charitable. And then these people go off and say, Oh, you know, God was with us and all this business. They're condemning Christ. They're condemning Christ. <laughs> 